You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Gordon Glenister hosts an outstanding podcast called the Influence Global Podcast. Gordon, tell these fine folks what they're going to get when they listen. We interview some amazing people from all around the world, whether they be influencers, content creators, brands, influencer platforms, anybody involved in the influencer industry. Um, there's some fantastic guests that make a fine listen for you. you you can find them on marketingpodcasts.net or you can also find them on my own website, which is www.gordonglenister.com. Or, of course, wherever you get your podcasts. On this episode of Winfluence, I have a bone to pick with Amazon in an unrelated but also sort of related area that I want your take on. <laughs> so you knew, you know something like this is coming. I'm always going to put you on the spot somehow. Amazon Influencers. Live streamers yes. there, shopping-centric affiliates, and understanding which of those are good, bad, effective, and so on might be the most valuable data an influence marketing strategist, brand, or agency could get their hands on today. And yet, there's no source for that data. Is Isaiah at least lobbying for some type of Amazon API so we can find out which influencers can actually move the needle on sales? There is actually something that we rolled out with Flex that will allow you to easily identify Am Amazon influencers. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. It's hard to have a conversation about influencer marketing software platforms and companies without talking about Isia. Isia Worldwide is a publicly traded company on the NASDAQ. Annual revenues are thought to be in the $20 million range. As of the end of 2021, its revenue was actually up 96% year over year. Not bad for a little idea called sponsored posts that Ted Murphy dreamt up at what was essentially a web development firm in Florida in 2006. Today, Isaiah is one of, if not the largest, influencer marketing software solution and managed services company. In many ways, it dictates what brands look for in a solution, largely because it's been doing this a lot longer than everyone else. Its managed services clients are also a who's who of Fortune 500 companies. Isaiah's lower-priced self-service platforms and marketplace have also served the industry well. And Isia has done a nice job of keeping up with the trends, changes, and innovations in the industry. A month ago or so, Murphy and team announced a whole new Isia. They've reimagined what influence marketers need in a tool set and have come out with a new platform called Flex. It features a series of tools that do one thing or another, but that can also be tied together nicely with links and associations to give people like me who build strategies for brands more insight into everything from how right an influencer might be to the performance of their content to their impact on ROI and beyond. Who better to explain all this to us than Ted Murphy himself? He was actually the first guest on Winfluence back in September of 2020 when my old podcast rebranded to focus on influence marketing. Ted is often who I turn to for conversations and insights about the industry, and it's always fun to have him on the show. I'll admit it's more fun now that he's the CEO of a publicly traded company because, well, from his PR team's perspective, I'm a risk. Nevertheless, Ted and I always have fun time chatting, and he doesn't mind a few hand grenades I toss him during the conversation. We caught up not long ago to have him tell me more about Flex, the new Isaiah, and let me pull a few pins and lob a few hot ones at him. You'll get to hear it all on today's episode. While I have used Isia a number of times in the past and certainly will in the future, this is the point in the show where I tell you about Tagger, our presenting sponsor. They are a competitor of Isia's for sure. And while I like a lot about both of those solutions, Tagger is the complete influencer marketing software package I use every day to find, engage, hire, collaborate, review, and measure all my influence marketing efforts. The most powerful part of Tagger, in my opinion, is the customized reports and cross-campaign reporting you can do. Just think of all the metrics and charts and graphs you want to put in a campaign report. Now take three or four campaigns and compare them. 
yeah, I can do all that in Tagger with a few clicks. Analyzing my reports to optimize my influence marketing efforts is quick and simple in Tagger. I could go on, but you know I use Tagger every day. You should check it out too. It might be right for your brand or agency. Go to jasonfalls.co slash Tagger to get a free demo and see if Tagger is right for you. That's jasonfalls.co slash Tagger. Ted Murphy invented influencer marketing software to a degree. He's now reinvented it at Isaiah. He'll tell us how and why next on Winfluence. Hey, gang, have you ever tried to manage a project over email? Things work well enough at the beginning, but if you start adding more than a couple of people or sharing more than a couple of files, the entire project becomes disorganized. Now, managing projects is tough enough. It's a struggle to juggle all the people, all the work, the expectations, and certainly to do that under pressure. Problem with many project management software platforms, though, is that they make it even harder by overcomplicating things. UX design is important because if you have that confusion and complication, then you let go of the tool. The promise fades, the frustration sets in. That's when teams turn to Basecamp. Famously straightforward and effective teams stick with it and projects thrive on it. Basecamp makes collaborating on projects without having to waste time. Teams that use Basecamp send less emails and have fewer meetings. If you are struggling with projects, sign up for Basecamp. Their pricing is simple and they give you all their features in a single plan. No upsells, no upgrades. Go to Basecamp.com slash Winfluence and try Basecamp for free. No credit card required. Cancel anytime. Basecamp.com slash Winfluence. Ted, it's good to have you back on the show. You were our first guest when the podcast that was something else became Winfluence a couple of years ago. So this is your second go round. The good news for everyone involved is we have a lot more listeners on the show now. So hopefully it'll get a lot more reach out there. But I wanted to bring you back because Isaiah has just launched a whole new website experience, product offerings. I want to ask you about a bunch of the different parts, but as a level set for those out there listening, I've always thought of Isia as two things, and this is going to be high level gloss over. It's going to leave some gaps, but I've always thought of Isia as two things, either a big managed service agency, if you will, where brands come to you for kind of a soup to nuts handling of campaigns and programs or a self-service discovery platform and marketplace that's probably a good solution for small businesses, but doesn't necessarily take it further than sort of discovery and maybe connection with people. Now, I know I'm glossing over, I'm missing a lot of what Isaiah has been, but it's generally served what I've considered kind of the two extremes in the industry really well. The middle, maybe not as well. And I think that's the impetus for this change. Is that right? Yeah, I would say that is a big part of what we're trying to solve for is that we recognize that the influencer marketing industry has customers of all sizes and needs, whether it be on the brand side or agency side. I think that through some of our offerings like Shake, we have served some of the smaller brands and agencies that want to do one-off you know, transactions. On the managed services side, we primarily cater to Fortune 500 customers who are you know, spending you know significant amounts of money on influencer marketing efforts. And then there's kind of this middle area where I don't think that we've served it as well as we could have. I think that part of that really goes back to some of the foundational underpinnings of our current software offering back when we launched it. I mean, so much has changed in this industry. It's always evolving And that platform in particular was very focused on workflows. And it was at a time of Instagram and even Twitter being very prominent and things being done a certain way. And over time, things have just changed. You know, we're seeing brands that on one hand are engaging fewer and fewer influencers from the very large brands. And on the other side, with the smaller brands and agencies, we're seeing them try to engage more and more, all while prices are rising. Complexity of programs is, I would say, at an all-time high. I mean, we're seeing brands that are, are even wanting to do full background checks on influencers now. It's just a whole different ball game, And we're trying to create a suite of solutions, whether they be managed service solutions or software solutions that allow customers to work with us in the way that they need to work. 
So in the sort of materials that I reviewed, I've watched a couple videos, I've poked around on the website. The one kind of underlying theme I think that comes out of all these changes is the, this new approach called Flex really promises to offer a lot more data. Now, on the surface, that seems a little weird to me because the data for each creator is only what the social network APIs allow, and everyone in your competitive set has access to the same data. So sell me on more data. What are y'all up to with all the slicing and dicing that helps us? <laughs> well, I think that there's two things there. We have dramatically expanded the universe of creators that we're looking at, and, and some of that is provided through API. Some of that is provided through crawling those websites and getting other information. And then a lot of what we are providing in terms of value has to do with the enrichments and, and analysis that we provide on top of that. So it's not just about what you get through the APIs. It's, you know, what do you do with that information? How do you provide benchmarking against creators? You know, you're not going to get that from the APIs. And how do you help the brands find the right creator as quickly as possible? So one thing I saw in the new materials that piqued my interest was getting into the sort of the profile and the day that you're getting on every creator was kind of that contact function. Now, I'm used to being able to maybe append or add a note or some information to a creator's profile, but you guys have really expanded that out to almost more of a CRM of sorts where I can look now and see that this person works with a talent manager and the talent manager's information in there as well. Is that accurate to say it's really more of a CRM? What's new there? There are certainly aspects of it that are very CRM-like. However, what we've done is said, okay, what is unique about our space? What tools do practitioners need in order to really be successful? And so it's not just the fact that you can have a, a profile for someone, but that you can then append that with a handle and that handle is updating in real time and you can gather that information for people that aren't necessarily in your program or haven't opted into a network, because that's another thing that frankly we're seeing more and more is that creators have a bit of fatigue. They don't want to have to go and sign up for another platform. They don't want to have to OAuth to you know another system that they're, they may be uncomfortable with. And what we're trying to do here is allow the brands to have those relationships and really step out of it. You know, if you look back at the history of Isaiah, it's always been a marketplace model, right? Like we have the creators, we have the brands. We make our money by arbitraging the buy and the sell. And what we've done with Flex is we've said, we don't care. We have transactions that are built into the system. You can do payments in the system, but it's a flat fee. It's $2. There's no take rate at all. Mm -hmm. And we are not saying, hey, you can't contact this creator or you can't send that email. We're saying just do it the, whatever way makes best. If you want to use our tools, fantastic. If you want to manage it in another way and just do emails or DMs or you know phone calls, we don't care. We're trying to, to provide the tools to help you manage that relationship the way that you need to manage it. And that really spans the gamut of you know micro and nano influencers up to the celebrities. And that's where you get into having the agents and sometimes you know having legal representation and being able to package that all together to say, okay, here has been uh, you know, my communication with this person. I can see all their handles. I can see all the money that I paid them. You know, I can see that the contracts that I've signed with them, it's all in one place. And I can share whatever part of that relationship I want. If I'm an agency, I can share whatever part of that relationship I want with my end customer if I choose to do so. Well, I mean, worst case scenario, I'm going to get in there and I'm going to see more information about how to, you know, partner with these creators, which is super helpful. So good stuff there. We're talking to Ted Murphy from Isia. His company has launched what it is calling the next generation of influencer marketing tools. I don't have a lot of arguments about that so far. When we come back, I'm going to ask him about a couple more features that I really like, then see if he has an answer to some of the big problems with influence discovery I keep whining about here. So stay tuned. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Lacey Boggs hosts and produces a great podcast called A Stone Marketing Detective 
a little bit different than your normal podcast on MPN. Lacey, tell us what these fine folks will get when they listen. A Stone Marketing Detective is a fully scripted and produced fictional radio play that follows crack marketing detective A Stone as she bamboozles the bad guys and detects dastardly deeds in the marketing industry. The podcast is a funny, tongue-in-cheek look at content marketing, shady marketers, and suspicious marketing techniques online. And I think it's a fun new way to have a business podcast that improves that marketing can be playful and effective. Where can people subscribe to this thing? You can go to acemarketingdetective.com or find it in your favorite podcast player or go to the Marketing Podcast Network. You heard her. Go subscribe. Back with Ted Murphy, the founder and CEO of Isaiah. For those of you out there who don't know, allow me to step up on a soapbox a little bit. Ted really did kind of invent influencer marketing software. The original version of Isaiah was all about sponsored tweets and blog posts. We're talking 2006, 2007. So you peckerheads out there who say you've been around since it all started in 2013, <laughs> sit down and pay attention, take some notes because you're probably going to learn something. Sorry, that's my get off the lawn <laughs> moment for the week. <laughs> I always love our time together, Jason. <laughs> well, I, I actually had another one of those yahoos this past week. So, you know, I've been around, this company's been around since influence marketing started, you know, like in 2012. And I just, I stopped, said, okay, stop. Just stop talking right now because you sound like a moron. But you know, that's my get off the lawn moment for the week. Always good when I break the guests up. All right, Ted, we're, I'm going to I'm going to steer you back to flex here. We're going to we're talking okay. about the new IZ. I'm not going to sit here and bitch about the Yahoo's. All right. One of the features you have in flex is this new share monitor. Now, you know, I've always been a big advocate and user of social listening tools over the years. This is IZ's kind of take on that. But it's not exactly social listening tools the way we think of the Radian 6s, to use an old term, of the world. Tell us more about Share Monitor and how it folds into the influence marketing practice here. Yeah, so Share Monitor is it's not really social listening, although it does have some of those components. It allows a brand or agency to go in, provide hashtags, provide keywords, provide brands or categories, do includes and excludes, and basically look at our database of, of content, which is about 1.4 billion posts across all different social platforms and be able to surface people who are creating content about those topics. Once you set that in place, it is going to run for as long as you, you know, specify. So it can be an ongoing monitor that says, oh, you know, I've just discovered new content. You can time box it to say, oh, I want to look back two years ago and see who is talking about. And it's an, another way to find influencers who you may want to be part of your campaign. And that may be looking at your own brand. That may be looking at a specific topic, or that may even be looking at your competitors and seeing, you know, what type of content they are creating. But when you look at those social listening platforms, I mean, they are incredibly expensive. And for most brands and agencies, the smaller ones that, that we're really trying to cater to with this, it's just cost prohibitive. You know, they can't afford to do it. And what we've tried to do here is say, look, we're not trying to solve real-time monitoring. That is not the goal here. That is not the use case. But if you want to be able to look through vast amounts of data, be able to search it, sort it, export it, you can't beat the price point that we're offering Flex at. Well, and it's super useful because like I'm just thinking of a use case, like if medium-sized brand, let's say, just wants to source user-generated content and they want to search for people who are using a certain hashtag or even just mentioning their brand across social platforms and whatnot, Super useful because you can easily find people who are talking about you but aren't necessarily quote-unquote influencers, um, right. although you've got some settings in there to say, I, I'm not interested in anybody who has under a certain amount of followers. So I know you can kind of tweak that, but super useful thing. Now, tell me where brand graph kind of overlaps with this because I've always loved your brand graph product, and I know that it kind of doesn't necessarily sit here but overlaps with it. How does that tool mix into it the platform? It does overlap with it in that every piece of content that we ingest and analyze runs through the brand graph algorithms. And so that is what determines 
how we enrich the content, whether that be with an individual brand or category or an industry. It allows the people that are using that system very to very quickly and easily say, hey, you know, I want to put in a brand and I don't have to worry about all the keywords and all the handles for these different platforms. BrandGraph already knows that. And as a customer of ours, you're also able to request inclusion of newer, smaller brands, which, you know, becomes much more complicated if you're looking at some of those other larger solutions. You know, we're really here to help cater to those small and mid-sized agencies on the software side. Nice. The last tool feature in this new Flex product I want to ask about is Content Mine. This looks like a combination of campaign reporting, a digital asset management play, maybe even content analysis engine. Dumb this down for me. What is Content Mine and what can it do for a brand or agency using the software? Let me actually let me back up real quick to to share monitor and actually discovery because one of the big things that we didn't talk about was the ability to add handles dynamically to our platform. So historically, you would be able to go into our system and if we had discovered a creator or they had signed up to the platform, we would show their information. Now we've introduced this concept where you could basically put in any post or handle on these supported platforms and we will go out in real time and we will analyze that handle and it will become part of the overall database moving forward. So you'll get instant benchmarks, instant insights, and be able to then create your contact record from that point moving forward. With Content Mind, it's tied into that, this idea of real-time discovery. So you know, let's say that you have an influencer. Influencer says, hey, I don't want to sign up for any sort of platform. And you've got to report on that content, right? You've got to monitor that content. You've got to be able to benchmark it against everything else that you've done. You can just go in and put in the URL of, of the content and we'll go out and ingest it. It will also support you uploading your own content and providing the associated metrics. So let's say you have a platform that is, there's no URL, right? Like <laughs> Snapchats, right? Like it, th there's no URL for the content, but you work with someone, you have you know a photo or video. Let's say you did an activation inside Roblox, right? What do you do with that? How do you organize that to be able to say, <laughs> you know, what was the overall impact of this campaign? This allows for anything to be uploaded. And, and because it's focused on influencer marketing, everything has you know, the ability to append likes or comments or shares so you can get down to that engagement rate as well. So it's not just uploading something to, to Dropbox or something like that, where it's like, oh yeah, I've got all my assets. What we care about as marketing professionals is like, okay, but what about the data associated with those assets? And there's not a great way to do that today. Yeah, you're right. And that kind of gets into another subject that I want to ask you about in a minute, but I've got one thing I want to hit first. The back end of what you're doing and the ability for you guys to do all this stuff in real time and so fast and powerfully is in most ways, I think, powered by Amazon, which is a partner of yours. But I have a bone to pick with Amazon in an unrelated but also sort of related area that I want you to take on. <laughs> So you knew you know something like this is coming. I'm always going to put you on the spot somehow. All right. All right, let's do this. Here we go. Amazon influencers, live streamers yes. there, shopping centric affiliates and the like, and understanding which of those are good, bad, effective and so on might be the most valuable data an influence marketing strategist brand or agency could get their hands on today. And yet, there's no source for that data. Is Isaiah at least lobbying for some type of Amazon API so we can find out which influencers can actually move the needle on sales? Well, I think that those are two questions. So there is actually something that we rolled out with Flex that will allow you to easily identify Am Amazon influencers. So, you know, in the same way that you can go in and type in a brand like Amazon, you can actually type in Amazon influencers and it will pull up people that have identified as Amazon influencers. That gets you the first part, which okay. will then also get you things like followers and engagement rate, right? What that doesn't get you is sales data. I think that Amazon is going to continue to hold that data <laughs> near and dear as I would in their situation. But you do bring up a, an interesting point in that that sales and conversion data is so incredibly important. And I agree. You know, I think that as we look at what's happening in the 
economy, things are tightening, people are having to reevaluate their marketing budgets and where they're spending and prove out ROI. I think being able to show the true return is going to become more and more important in the future. And that's why we've rolled out Shopify integration. That's why we've rolled out Google Analytics e-commerce tracking. And this is how all these pieces start to come together. So when you think about content mine and adding a piece of content to our system. You think about tracking links and our link shortener that we've built in. You can do all those things individually. If you want to just come in there and add content and not associate it with anything, it works great. But when you start tying these pieces together and you say, hey, I gave Jason this tracking link, he created this piece of content, we can then start doing calculations about performance. And when you tie that back and you have a Google Analytics integration or you have a Shopify integration, I can actually say, Jason tweeted out this link. Mm -hmm. Here was the tweet. It drove 100 customers. They purchased $10,000 worth of product. And here were the customers. Here were the individual customers that made the purchase. So we show all of that down to the individual end customer level inside of Flex. And that's up to you in terms of the operation of the platform. If you want to tie all those things together to get that level of insight, you can. And I would argue as an influencer marketing professional, you should put in the effort, extra effort to make that happen. But if you're just trying to get things out the door quickly, you can utilize these tools independently as well. Yeah. Well, and just as a reminder to those out there listening, certainly the tool that Ted's talking about is extremely powerful. It does take that, as he's mentioned, you got to put the work in to make it work. And you also have to be able to have some sort of valued conversion point on your website for that all to work. So that's why Google Analytics, e-commerce, and Shopify come into play there. If you're not direct to consumer on your website, the best you can do is, okay, we're going to capture a lead. Maybe it's contact information. Maybe it's, you know, some other, you know, form of capturing information from your customers and you're going to assign some sort of value to that, then you can actually start to do an ROI calculation. But when you're assigning a value versus measuring an amount of money that you've actually, you know, taken off somebody's credit card, you're dealing with imaginary money at that point. So I don't necessarily recommend that. But for the direct-to-consumer brands out there, this is extremely powerful. So I want to circle back to the point on being able to input information into the content from various platforms. You mentioned, you know, a Roblox kind of thing, which is awesome. And I think that's great that we can input that information in there. But it kind of ties into kind of the last real big topic I want to talk about. And I've said for a long time now that most influencer marketing platforms like Isaiah, but also all the others. So this is directed industry wide, not just at you or Isaiah. But the software solutions do not provide good insight, and some don't provide any insight into a creator's owned content platforms. I can't find how much traffic comes to their blog. I can't find out how many people subscribe to their email newsletter. I don't know how many people pay for subscription-based content on Substack or OnlyFans. I don't even know if a creator has a podcast in some of these platforms. So to be fair, social networks offer APIs where you can mine the public profile and the content data, and it's all neat and packaged in under Facebook or Instagram or whatever blogs, podcasts, and email platforms, there's not a central software hub for that information. So the data is scattered. So it's much more difficult for companies like yours to do something with it. But what can Isaiah do to help us uncover more information about a creator's own content so that people like me can better qualify or even quantify their impact? Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the biggest challenges that influencers face out there because that is, frankly, the most valuable channel that they have is those own channels. And I look at podcasting in particular, and I've actually sent a few emails to Apple in the past asking for you know access to podcast data. And they have said that you know it's something that they're working on, but not something that I've seen that has been released. You know, I think that is. Apple in particular is a huge opportunity for platforms like ours, as well as the end creators. All of them hold that information very tightly right now. So as a marketer, it's difficult because you have to basically take the creator at their word for what their stats are. And I think it's also a little bit more challenging in the audio space because outside of 
you know, giving somebody a special URL or a promo code or something like that, it's hard to track the Mm -hmm. impact. So if you don't have listener data and it's harder to get any sort of, you know, interaction or quote unquote engagement like you would on, on another platform, I think podcasts are at a natural disadvantage right now. But it's something that could absolutely be solved by the host platforms opening up and making it easier to get at that data. Sure. I wonder with platforms, I mean, certainly Google Analytics would be the easiest one, but also maybe, you know, MailChimp and some of the other email platforms, Substack, whatever. And maybe even it's something that, you know, you said Apple's working on something. Maybe there's some other pod chaser or some other platforms out there. I wonder if it would be a good way to approach this to say, hey, we're going to let the creator, if they log in and they want to claim their profile and make sure that they're authenticated to some of these social networks on Isaiah or whatever platform we're talking about, I wonder if it wouldn't be nice to just have them be able to authenticate their own Google Analytics or their own MailChimp or their own whatever so that they can say, hey, I want brands to see this data because it's good. The ones that, you know, are transparent about what they do can authenticate and the ones that don't. Yeah, we we are not going to have that for the initial rollout of our new marketplace, but it is actually something that is inside of Isaiah X right now is the ability for bloggers in particular to authenticate their Google Analytics and we pull in that traffic data. And it will be something that we add to the marketplace, you know, post post launch because we nice. see value there. And to the extent that there are Podcast platforms that make that information available will integrate that as well in the future. Our goal is to be able to support as many of these different platforms as we can because it just helps creators earn, right? It helps the creators be able to verify their information and give the marketers a better idea of what they're buying. Sure. Well, I'm excited to see that because, I mean, as you know, I run the Marketing Podcast Network on which this show airs. And I know someone like Nick Westergaard, for example, is far more impactful than his social media profiles represent because a lot of people listen to On Brand, which is his podcast. So it's good that people can see that for him and other podcasters out there, too, as those things are integrated into the new platform. Ted Murphy, we wouldn't be talking about influencer marketing or influencer marketing software probably at all if it weren't for you. So thank you for continuing to lead and innovate in the space. And I always appreciate your time either on the show or bouncing messages back and forth to keep me in line and informed. So thank you for your time and thank you for all you do, sir. Jason, and thank you for this show too and for continuing to push the industry forward. Appreciate it. Always love talking to Ted. Such a great guy. And Isaiah is certainly a platform with a wider range of services now for brands of any size. Check them out at Isaiah.com. That's I-Z-E-A dot com. Speaking of checking out, I need your help getting more people to check out Winfluence. Tell someone who might want to know more about Influence Marketing about this podcast. Send them to winfluencepod.com or share a link to this episode on your favorite social network of choice. If you have a moment, drop Winfluence a rating or review on your podcast app. We're on them all. You can also help make a future episode of Winfluence awesome, and I really want you to do this. Think of a really good question about influence or influence marketing that you're curious about, you want my answer to or take on. Send that in an email to jason at jasonfalls.com. I would prefer that you feel adventurous and record it as a voice memo on your phone and email me that file. That way I can play it and let you ask the question right here on the show using the recording. Either way, send it to me at jason at jasonfalls.com. I would love to base a future topic for this show on your question. Winfluence is a production of Falls and Partners. The technical production is by MPN Studios. Winfluence airs along MPN, the marketing podcast network. Thanks for listening, folks. Let's talk again soon on Winfluence. Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. And if you need help with your influence marketing strategy, drop me a line at jason at jasonfalls.com.
If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. You may know you are listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Izzy House hosts a great podcast called the Space Marketing Podcast. Izzy, tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. Space Marketing Podcast is where we explore marketing principles, strategies, and tactics through the lens of space. I talk space with some very interesting industry professionals about their challenges and successes with marketing in the new commercial.